Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and these oh, <laughs> are the books on the top of my physical TBR. There are actually more books than just this stack. I believe I picked out 20 books on the top of my physical TBR. I believe I filmed this video sometime last year, um, but my physical TBR priorities have changed. And I've got new books, I've gotten rid of some other books, and this time I'm incorporating historical romances. I know my last uh, priority video, I did not include historicals, and that is gonna change because I'm in the total historical romance mood right now. So I need to read some of these. So I have quite a few contemporary books. I think I have a fantasy one and um, like nine historical romances. So Let's get into it. These are all romances that I really want to read as soon as possible. Hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers that I do read these before the end of the year, but I'm not making myself. I'm a big mood reader, and if I don't read things I'm in the mood for, if I force myself to read something, I know I won't like it. So I'm not gonna force myself to read any of these, but right now, as of now, in February 2023, Avery really wants to read these books. So first off, I have this one, which is Broken Fighter by Maggie Cole. This is her second book in the Mafia Wars series. I read book one. It's back there somewhere. I love it. And so Maggie was so sweet and sent me these books, like the first three books in the series. And uh, she was so sweet, signed it too. Look at that. I really loved book one, which is Ruthless Stranger. I'm pretty sure that's the title. Um, but I loved it so much and I don't know why I haven't read more of Maggie Cole's books. I think it's just because um, she's not on any of my like listening platforms besides Audible so I kind of have to use a credit every month and I'm a big stickler for my audiobook credits y'all on Audible. Like I'm a big stickler for that so um, I just need to get over it. I just need to get the audiobooks because like they're really good. The audiobook for uh, Ruthless Stranger was really good. So I need to pick this one up. I'll just read a tagline at the top here. It says, he's my brother's best friend, a Russian killer and boxer with no ties to the O'Malley crime family, who is my family. Totally, totally into that. I love Brother's Best Friend. And I would love for people to tell me what their favorite book in this series is, um, because I really want to know. And maybe they'll force me to read all the books in the series. Like if your favorite book is book number five, that means I have to get to that one and I have to read the other books before I get to that point. So I need to like hurry up. <laughs> so um, this just looks so good. I need to put the other book in the series on this list too, obviously. Next is Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. <laughs> I own the audiobook for this. I got this off of Audible during an Audible sale. There is no excuse now for me to not read this book. <laughs> so I just keep pushing it off. I, I push off books I think I will love. I do that. I don't know why I do that. I just do. So. This book is quite chunky also, and I, I put off chunky books, even though I know I'm gonna love them. I don't know why I do that, but um, this one just looks fantastic. Everyone raves about this book. I have personally not heard a bad thing about this book from any of my friends or anyone that I know of. Like no one has disliked this book. Everyone loves it. This is a pirate romance. It's also historical. You maybe couldn't tell from the cover, like it's not a mass market, um, but I don't want to know anything about this. So I'm not going to tell you the summary um, because every time someone talks about it, I like fast forward because I don't want to know anything. <laughs> All I know is that people love this book, but I've heard great things about Pam Godwin. This would be my first Pam Godwin book. So I need to get on it. I'm counting these next three books as like one slot out of my 20 slots. Um, but that is the rest of the Salacious Players Club series by Sarah Kate. I own the next three, which is Eyes on Me, book two, which ooh, which I believe is a step-sibling romance. Um, Give Me More, which is um MMF romance. And then a Mercy, which is older woman, younger guy romance with an age gap. I want to read these books. I loved Praise and it was so amazing meeting Sarah Kate in person. Like she's signed all of these books and I got a, a, a Salacious Players Club member stamp. Like love it. And so I really want to read these books, especially before... um. What's Book Bonanza? Man, the name just escaped me. But um, especially before Book Bonanza, when I get to see her again, so I can order the other books in the series that will be coming out later this year. And hopefully some other books that I love. But I would love to like chat with her about these books, hopefully when I like meet her. Because when I met her in September, I'd only read Praise and like I was too shy to like talk to her about it. So I just stood there while she signed my books. 
<laughs> so I need to get better at that. Like it was my first signing. I need to like learn how to like chat with authors because I was not very good at that. <laughs> a little socially anxious me. So um, I really want to read these books, obviously. Next I have Unlikely Match by Laura Bradbury. Um, this one just looks so good. This author I'm really interested in because this is own voices when it comes to transplants. So our heroine here, she um, I believe has like a kidney disease and she has to um, go through a bunch of transplants. I think this is dislike or antagonist to uh, lovers in like a workplace setting. So I'm excited. And then you have that um, transplant representation. So I'm excited to pick this up. The fantasy romance on my TBR that I'm trying to get to in February for Fyro Feb, like I want to read more fantasy romances this month, is The Bridge Kingdom by, uh, oh, Danielle L. Jensen. Sorry, I forgot the author's name for a second there. Um, but I think this is a romance where the heroine has been trained to kill this king, but then she has to marry him in order to get close to him to kill him, I think. I don't want to know too much because I love going into fantasy romances as blind as possible, but man, people really like this book. I do know it's more like closed door, which is fine with me. I don't care about stuff like that, um, but I do like knowing beforehand, so... You know, like I fully expect with romance books for everything to be open door. So when it's closed door, I'm a little bit disappointed, but I don't not like a book because it's closed door. I just want to know beforehand. You know what I mean? Um, because so many of my favorite books are closed door. Like, okay. I I'm really intrigued by this and I know my friends really enjoy this book. Next I have Luck and Last Resorts by um, Sarah Grunder Ruiz. Ruiz, I think that's how you pronounce that author's name. Um, but this one has, I believe, depression representation in it. Um, I saw it on a list on um, Instagram or something, but it just looks so cute. Look how cute this looks. I do think it's the second book in a series, so I have to go back and read like book one, um, but I do know it has good representation. I'm pretty sure it's own voices with depression rep, and so that's why it's on my TBR, um, but the cover is giving me Titanic vibes for sure, and I love Titanic. Oh my goodness. Okay, so 10 years after fleeing home, Nina is the chief stewardess on the super yacht Serendipity single by choice and perfectly content with how her life has turned out. But Nina's ex coworker and old flame, Irish chef, Ollie Dune, done, done, it's done. Irish chef, oh my gosh, uh, isn't so happy with the status quo. One year after leaving yachting, he's returned as the serendipity's chef with an ultimatum. If Nina continues to deny she's in love with him at the end of this charter season, he'll go back to Ireland for good. An Irishman? I'm, I'm super excited now. I need to go pick up book one though. I don't own book one, but I need to go look it up on like Libby or something because I think it's on there. Next is Real by Kennedy Ryan. <laughs> this has been on so many of my TBRs, y'all. I had it on, I think my December TBR of 2022. Did I get to it? Unfortunately not. Um, I just, I'm just, just super intimidated by this book. I am, I'm super intimidated by it. I don't know why I am, but I am. I think it's because I've never read a Kennedy Ryan and this would be my first. <laughs> And it has a chronic illness representation. So like I've built this book up in my mind and if it doesn't live up to it, I will be crushed. But all my friends adore it. So I don't know why I would be crushed, but that's how I feel. It's like Sea of Ruin. Like I keep putting this book off. And I don't know why. Like the audiobook has come in and out of my Libby hold for months. <laughs> So um, I just need to pick it up. Like, I don't know why I keep putting it off. Um, this is a romance where I believe our heroine in here, um, she's dealing with a chronic illness. She's living with a chronic illness and um, she ends up getting hired to be the head actress for um, this guy's new movie. He's a very famous movie director. And that's all I know. Um, and that my friends love this one. So I need to bite the bullet <laughs> and get to reading this. Next I have Almost Maybe by Katie L. Tyler. This is so cute. Look at this cover. I should have read this in the fall because it gives me like fall vibes, but I don't care. I'm not a, like a seasonal type of reader. This one was actually sent to me by the author herself, which is super nice. She um, signed it for me and everything. Super sweet. And she's just super sweet to text with on Instagram too. And um, I think I started this book. I got to pay chapter, um, like the second prologue or something. And um, I think another book came out and I had to put this down for whatever reason. This is about Maya and Maddie. And I believe they like grew up together and the heroine's always been in love with him. I don't know if he reciprocates that yet, but again, I like to go into books as blind as possible. But um, from what I've heard about this book from the author, it sounds really cute. Next I have A Wilderness Within by Emma Castle. I really love Emma Castle's books. And <laughs> this one is one I really want to pick up now 
not a couple years ago <laughs> because um, this book takes place during a pandemic, but this was written way before COVID. <laughs> So I feel like Emma Castle was like psychic or something, you know? But that's all I know about it and that like some of my friends really love this one. I love Emma Castle's writing. Um, I really want to reread Love in the Wild, which is her Tarzan retelling. I went and looked online on Amazon, like Love in the Wild is like the only Tarzan retelling out there. I need more Tarzan retelling. So I was like, I miss the Tarzan retelling. I want to reread it again. But you know what? I have an Emma Castle I haven't read yet. So I need to read this one. And I do think I have the audiobook on um any play i'm pretty sure so i have that available for me next i have hush darling by avery kingston i am really looking forward to this one and the other book that i got from her at wanderlust um that one deals with like a radio show host which is very interesting to me um and i believe he's visually impaired as well um uh, but this one is about i believe our heroine who does not speak or is it the hero i think it's the hero the heroine is pregnant and on the run and i think the hero like lets her stay in his cabin when she's running through the woods and i believe he's either deaf or is speechless he doesn't speak so i'm not sure it doesn't really say on the back um but i've heard really good things about this from my friends who have read it since wanderlust so i'm really excited and i really loved meeting avery kingston she was so incredibly sweet and I just want to really love one of her books. So I hope this is it. The last contemporary one, because we're going to be going into historicals in a second, is uh, Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole. This is a little novella. And um, I know this is about a heroine who is a wheelchair user and about her romance with a guy. She like watches, I don't know if it's on Twitch or like some streaming like live show platform and um he does like I think puzzles and talks while he does puzzles and that's the way she falls asleep is like watching him or listening to him play puzzles like his voice is the perfect like like sleep inhibitor for her then he stops like doing those live streams and she like messages him as like I can't go to sleep like I will pay for just you like videos of you talking so I can fall asleep um and I think they fall in love obviously but I've heard really good things about this one I think Brie sent this one to me and she really loves it my only issue is I haven't read book two in the series and I think this is book number 2.5 so I need to research and figure out if I could read this one as a standalone so all the rest are historicals here I believe I have nine so Let's get into them. First, I have Trumming the Prince by Teresa Medrios. Look at this, step back. This is the first book in, I believe her, what are they called? Like fairy tale retelling series. Cause I have the second book in the series too, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, This one, I don't know what retelling this is. I don't know what retelling it is. It doesn't really allude to it on the back, but our, her our hero ends up getting like custody of, I don't, it's not custody in the old times, but he ends up, says like being the reluctant papa to to a dozen unruly children i don't know how um but then he realizes he, they need a mother and so um he decides to marry the heroine lady willow of bedlington and that's all i know but um i want to read a Teresa medrios because i've heard really good things about her next is the princess by uh claire de la croix i've talked about this author in so many tbr videos because i want to read these books because i own like five of her books and have i read a single one no but but her books like just look so intriguing to me and so this one is obviously about a princess okay so i think there's like three guys trying to woo this princess and so she makes them complete a task and whoever completes this task will win her hand in marriage it says he who returns with a gift that makes me laugh will win my hand wind win my hand so that sounds funny like i feel like these books like i have a vibe that these books are just gonna be super funny and I think the guy um, who is going to win her heart is Luke. I mean, I have so many books in the series. I just need to read them. The only thing is they're not on audio. So I have to put aside time. Um, next is Wicked Intentions by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is the first book in the Maiden Lane series. And I got a first signed edition of this book. Like, can't, like I still can't believe it. I found this in a half price uh, books. But love it but this is the first book in the main lane series i've read book seven and book eight and so i really want to go back and read the other books and i don't know anything about this one i don't want to i go into these books as blind as possible but i just heard amazing things about this series next i have the viking she would have married by lucy morris this has been on many tbrs as well but like um the claire de la croix book lucy morris does not have audiobooks and so i have to set aside time to read physically which i'm not really used to i'm a big audio 
Um, but I love Lucy Moore. She's my favorite Viking historical romance author. So I know I'm going to love these books. I just need to stop being stubborn and sit down and physically read a book. Okay. Um, but I think this is the first book in her, is it her Shield Maiden series? Yeah. So Shield Maiden Sisters. I think these are all series. Each book in the series is about like a warrior Viking woman. So I think like Brienne of Tarth-esque from Game of Thrones. So I'm thrilled to read something like that. You like you don't get a lot of that. I love how unique she makes her romances. Like she had a nun one that I loved. So uh, next I have How to Abduct a Highland Lord by Karen Hawkins. Um, this is the first book in one of her series I have not read yet. And I just, I need to read more of Karen Hawkins because I loved the, um, I think it's called The Duchess Diaries. I really loved that series. This one is about Fiona McLean who goes to a wedding that is hardly the wedding she dreamed of. No family, no guests, just a groom who's been dragged literally to the altar. But if marriage to Black Jack Kincaid, the handsome wastrel she'd swore never to see again, will avert a bloody war between their clans, so be it. So she can share his bed without losing her heart. That sounds good. I love like marriage alliance romances ever since Never Sue's a Scott. So like I hope I love this one as much as that one. Next is How to Wed a Highland Bride by Sarah Gabriel. Look how pretty this cover is. This one is about James McCarran, who has no desire to venture into the thorny battlefield of marriage, but his grandmother's will issues an ultimatum, marry or forfeit his rightful inheritance. I love these romances. Like where you have to gain, to in order to gain an inheritance, you have to get married. I've read like a bunch of them already this year and I love it. Only the most ravishing woman could make it worth his while. But when he meets Elizabeth MacArthur, she is nothing like he anticipated. Yes, she is beautiful, luminous, really. But there is something mysterious about this lass. Oof, was it a Highland romance? Yes. Okay, so reluctant to leave her Highland home, Elizabeth must keep an astonishing secret when she unexpected, when unexpected circumstances force her to marry. But as an unseen threat draws ever closer, about to reveal the truth of her life in the mystical Highlands, she soon realizes that her only haven is in James's passion and brace. Yes, sold. I want to read that now. Next is A Necessary Husband by Deborah Mullins. Look at how pretty that is. Look at the flowers in her hair. Okay, so this is about Garrick Lynch, who is the long lost heir of the Duke of Rainwood. And it is Lucinda Devering's job to transform him into a proper Englishman. And if she fails his impossible task, the Duke will reveal her desperate secret, ruining her forever. Yes, I am so into that. Next is Warrior's Woman by Johanna Lindsay. I want to read at least one Johanna Lindsay this year. I haven't read any of her books. And this one is like a sci-fi romance. Like sold. I, I am sold. I've heard really good things about this one. It's just really long, you know? And then lastly, I have Reforming a Rake by Suzanne Enoch. I believe this is a governess romance. Yes, a governess must never be alone with a man. Her reputation mustn't have even a hint of scandal. She must never reveal personal emotions, no matter how strong the provocation of her employer. She must never ever fall in love with someone above her station, especially a rake, no matter how devastating his kisses may be. Oh my goodness. I love governess nanny romances, so I wanna pick this up right now. I need to go look to see if it has an audiobook, because if it does, I will pick it up right now. Also look how, <laughs> look how classic that cover is. Yes, I've also never read from this author before, so. That's a plus. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 20 books that are on the top of my physical TBR. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and let me know which books I should prioritize. <laughs> um, if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me. Let's see. Let's do um, any flower emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.